Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics and this viewer's choice I'll be talking about Boris Johnson's Brexit spending plans and whether or not they're achievable. But first, if you'd like to take part in the polls for these videos, then you can find the latest one by clicking on the channel name and going into the community tab. So on a very simple level, if we're being honest, Boris Johnson's no deal Brexit spending plans lack credibility even on a rather simple level. He is talking about massively increasing spending on public services, including the NHS, schools, social care and the police. The idea of believing conservative leaders when they say such things always seemed to me to be a form of madness. But people do believe it, and they even believe it when those same conservative prime ministers say that they've increased funding in those areas when the figures show that they've actually reduced it. Then there are his plans to sail us through the economic storm of a no-deal Brexit. When asked about these plans, Boris Johnson said that he hadn't costed them up. They, they hadn't actually been planned. So even on an individual basis, um, an, an ordinary person needs to budget to make sure that they don't spend more than they earn. Only the, in the event of earning far more than you can ever spend can you wing it and not get into financial difficulties. Well, no government is ever in that position. The country can always use more funding, but has limited resources from the tax receipts. So uncosted plans are no plans at all. Then there's his plan to create a scenario whereby the country becomes much less productive. If you thought that the dearth of investment in the UK has been bad these past six months, as Brexit deal has looked less likely, just wait and see what happens when the thing that those investors fear, a complete break with the EU, materialises. So more people will lose their incomes, or at least see them reduced. That means lower tax receipts. Compound this with the fact that you know the Boris Johnson plans that I actually believe he will carry out involve tax cuts and loosening the strings on tax avoidance laws. And his spending plans can't possibly work without the sort of horrendous borrowing that will be made all the worse due to a poorer credit rating for the country and a further devalued pound. And that devalued pound won't help exports as much as they might as the extra competitiveness offered will be offset by the tariffs and quotas that will suddenly be slapped on British goods as our trade agreements and deals turn to ash. So Boris Johnson's tax and national insurance promise has been calculated to cost about £20 billion by the Institute of Fiscal Studies. There's Johnson's commitment to improve cross Pennine Rail at the cost of £3.6 billion. Uh, just leaving the EU without a deal costs £30 billion a year, uh, without the UK even getting an extra benefit from that. And then there's the extra £1 billion for the police recruits and £5 billion for schools, though no extra for colleges, I notice. I've not found any firm commitments to the NHS or social care spending, even though he says he will, so I'm not going to try and guess what that adds to the bill. So removing Johnson's vague promises, which will have a price tag, and his definite commitments, will cost us at least £60 billion in the first year, if he sticks to those commitments. And as I said, that doesn't include his more nebulous promises. I don't know what they would cost. And this is all money that the government isn't currently spending. So extra money would have to be found for it. That means extra borrowing. Now, one of the plans is to take advantage of Philip Hammond's tighter spending. So he laid out rules that the UK should not borrow more than 2% of GDP. But borrowing has actually been a lot lower than that. So he could not only borrow up to the 2% limit, but also extra, the extra that Hammond effectively wasn't borrowing himself, that would allow them to borrow what's been calculated £26 billion. But there are a number of problems with using this figure. The first is obvious, it's less than half of the amount needed to fund his commitments. It's nowhere near enough. But the second is that the money doesn't actually exist. It's based on the UK's economic position in March, the end of the first quarter in 2019. But growth has already fallen, with economists thinking there's already a 25% chance that we're already in a recession. Bear in mind that the first quarter of 2019 produced quite a buoyant economy as businesses were spending to protect themselves as best they could from the effects of a no-deal Brexit. But whatever those businesses could have done has now been done. That spending has been made. So when the June figures are calculated by the Office for Budgetary Responsibility, that figure of £26 billion will be way lower. And when, you know, when we get an even sharper downturn after a no-deal exit from the EU... The only way to, to keep afloat will be to borrow well beyond the limits of sane fiscal policy. The Office for Budgetary Responsibility said that the Prime Minister's plans, and I quote, would push government borrowing and debt up from the levels expected in our forecast and that there is no war chest or pot of money set aside that would make them a free lunch. Now, when it comes to borrowing and debt, it's not that much different for a country than it is an individual citizen. Massive amounts of borrowing can be both managed 
and dangerous. So take, for example, a young person getting their first house. Some people get the largest mortgage they can. They live frugally for a few years, after which their improving wages as they climb up through the corporate ladder makes that borrowing much more manageable, easy even. As long as your income keeps rising, then it's all good and works out very well in the long run. But if after getting this mortgage, you suddenly lose your job, then that large mortgage payment becomes a lot more difficult to manage, especially if you then have to take another job with a lower wage. So whether it ends up being manageable to undertake massive borrowing depends on your earning power. And so it is with the country. If there were a realistic prospect for the UK to enter this golden age that Johnson keeps talking about, then massively increasing borrowing could work. But the reality is that crashing out of the EU without a deal kills growth stone dead. If it even still exists. The other issue, of course, is Whereas if you look at the last Labour government under Gordon Brown, his rules were we will only borrow to fund investment in the country. With Johnson, a lot of that borrowing is to just fund tax breaks for the already wealthy. It doesn't do anything for the country. It also means that we are going to be very vulnerable to economic shocks around the world, such as occurred a decade ago. And Brexit itself is set to cause such a shock, to say nothing of the downturn in China. And it's quite obvious what will have to happen. Boris Johnson and his new Chancellor, Sajid Javid, will prioritise the tax cuts. There will be no money for the other promises, so they will be shelved. Uh, maybe they'll do what May did and say that the money went in when it didn't at all. Maybe it will give him an excuse to follow through on another of his election promises and charge people for using NHS services and advance the wheel of privatisation another turn. It's been reported that there will be an emergency budget put before the House in the second week of October to prepare for their intended no-deal Brexit. It's also been reported that there is unlikely to be time for a full spending review. So the Treasury will essentially just be winging it through the most turbulent time in our history. But that's the way Boris Johnson likes it, I guess. So I hope you find the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the like and subscribe button and also consider clicking the Patreon link as well. And until next time. I'll see you later.